Hi, right, guys. We're making an early start, and the stars are still shining brightly. This is the golden time for us, 4 a.m. Kojin Nakakita of Hitachi Limited. He is based in Tokyo, and his main professional work is to negotiate with foreign companies. However, there's another aspect to his life. Let's get started. I'll work them hard. Ice sledge hockey is the most grueling and demanding sport for people with disabilities. Nakakita is the coach of the Japanese national team, and his work is to unite the team. He used to be an ice hockey player, and since he became coach of the Japan national team, it has developed to become one of the most powerful teams in the world. Forget techniques and other factors. The worst scenario is if the team feels emotionally that it is lost. Even if you're not up to their level, give it your best. I never slack off, I never back down. They are trying hard to attain real strength through repeated confrontations while overcoming their internal conflicts. Okaya City, Nagano Prefecture. The Japan National Ice Sledge Hockey Team practice facilities are here. With the exception of special training camp sessions, they practice when the ice rink is not being used. On this day, they practiced for two hours starting before 5 a.m. Then after a rest, they again practiced in the early afternoon. Ice sledge hockey is a sport mainly played by people with lower limb disabilities. The rink size, the number of players, and the basic rules are the same as ice hockey. Body contact is allowed, just as in ice hockey. And this is one of the most dynamic competitive sports for disabled people. Players ride on a special sledge, known as a stretch type fitted with two skate blades. The grip end of the hockey stick is fitted with ice picks so that players can grip the ice and get traction with a rowing action. The stick blade section is used to control the puck, and with this they make passes and goal shots. Players battle for control of the puck on the ice. They make rapid shots, and the game moves at a fast pace, alternating constantly between attack and defense. The sport has the dynamic thrill of ice hockey and the power to enthrall spectators. The excitement of slamming into other players, this is a sports experience that many people without disabilities can never know. The really enjoyable aspect is the physical conflict. This sport gives us the unity of a team. We gain inner strength. Ice sledge hockey in Japan began in 1993. Since then, club teams have been formed in Nagano, Hokkaido, Tokyo, and Aomori. The national team is made up of players from all parts of Japan, centering on the Nagano club team. Many of the team members have been national team players for years, and so they have developed good teamwork. However, this sport is not yet very well known, and there are relatively few participants. When the national team was created, it was not yet possible to have real contests with teams from North America or Europe, which are leading nations in this sport and have a longer history. In Japan, there are relatively few players, and so it was not really possible to have realistic competitions. Nakakita, who became coach of the national team in 2002, had a mission to catch up with the leading nations. My first impression was that they were trying hard, but they lacked the urgent hunger to win the potential victors. Nakakita decided to adopt the word respect as the team slogan. This embodies the concept of understanding other players and the opposing teams while practicing hard. So he pushed them hard. 
he taught them the techniques and strategies of ice hockey. And he also worked to instill them with the irrepressible urge to win and the inner strength to follow through. At first I felt he was frightening. Although he was not intimidating, he did have an aura of power and authority. He used Spartan training techniques. He forced us to give all we had and drove us to exhaustion. I adopted a strict regime in everything. I gave them no leeway to escape, the discipline of sports and the strictness I myself had experienced. Sometimes he even broke their hockey sticks. Nakakita started to play ice hockey when he was only six years old. Every year during the summer holiday of his junior high school, he attended an ice hockey school in Canada. Nakakita is very enthusiastic about ice hockey, and he has a serious approach to the game. He once said that he intended to become a successful ice hockey player. Subsequently, Nakakita attended schools famous for ice hockey, and his high school was in Canada, and his university in the U.S. His ice hockey career appeared to be going smoothly, but the cruel reality of life intervened. He tore a ligament in his right knee. This was a serious injury and fatal for his ice hockey. And so the curtain fell on his life as an ice hockey player. When I realized that I would never be able to resume my hockey career, I felt my life was over. This was a terrible setback. I thought it was the end of the road. I started out life writing a dream, but the dream collapsed. After his return to Japan, he joined Hitachi Limited. His life no longer had any ties to ice hockey. However, his deep enthusiasm for the game lived on in his heart. One day, 15 years after joining Hitachi, he received an email from one of his co-workers who was a coach for a wheelchair basketball team. It said, the Japan national ice sledge hockey team is looking for a coach. At that time, Nakakita was on a business trip to Taiwan, so I sent him an email suggesting this position. But no reply came. So I phoned him and I found that he had already begun planning for the position even before answering me. <laughs> when Nakakita actually watched ice sledge hockey matches, he was moved by the passion of this sport. Through this, he became more enthusiastic about this position. However, he still had a problem to resolve. He was worried that these players who were actively playing the game would not accept him because he had abandoned his own ice hockey dream due to his knee injury. And this presented him with a moral dilemma. However, he wanted to give something back to ice hockey, a game he had grown up with. More than anything else, he found the spirit of the players overwhelmingly compelling, and his anxiety was dispelled. The team players were very cheerful, and I thought they had a wonderful relationship with each other. I was deeply moved by the sight of them trying their best. I felt a strong urge to support them. I thought that if I could be of use to them, I wanted to be their coach. Then Nakakita's second motivation in life commenced. He became a passionate coach and refused to allow compromise, not only in the players, but also in himself. He is the most highly motivated person I have met in all my 38 years of life. We practice with him, and we too feel the depth of his inner strength. Nakakita was appointed chairman of the Japan Ice Sledge Hockey Association, and he has worked hard to improve conditions for the players, such as at camps, on tours, new equipment, and nutrition management. 
His enthusiasm also attracted many specialists in the area who now help to support the team. They are all working for the national team as volunteers, as is Nakakita. Nakakita's efforts have also had an effect on the Hitachi group, and it not only contributes funds to the national team, but it also provides extensive support in areas such as training uniforms and supporting the movement and accommodation of the team when they go to play away matches in Japan and overseas. In addition to logistic support, within the vast Hitachi group, people have come up with some excellent ways of helping us, and I'm extremely grateful to them. A one-month schedule for Nakakita. About 50% of the month he is engaged in overseas work, and he only has two free days. On his return to Japan, he sometimes goes straight from the airport to the training camp. He devotes his entire energies to both business and to his coaching duties without neglecting either. And he has constantly maintained this policy. He devotes all his energies within a very tight schedule to such an extent that we worry about him. I have never seen such a boss as this before. He really is extremely enthusiastic. Hitachi provides diverse forms of support for ice sledge hockey. Both my bosses and co-workers show understanding for what I'm doing. I like to do everything to the best of my ability. If I were to slacken off, even momentarily, I would lose the support of the players as well as their trust. I am at my best when everybody is wondering why I'm so enthusiastic and devoted. Right from when Nakakita began to work as a coach, he placed great emphasis on the concept of respect. For him, respect involves showing understanding for the people he works with, learning and constantly thinking what he should do. For Nakakita, the spirit of respect also means believing that he can empower his team. And that's why he constantly emphasizes this word to the players. By enhancing the team's abilities through the full-scale adoption of the skills and tactics of ice hockey, by gaining experience through frequent overseas tours and international matches, and by ensuring that the spirit of respect took root, the Japan national team grew steadily in strength and began to achieve good results. They also began to gain victories over leading overseas teams, matches that previously had been disastrous, and they progressively became an ice sledge hockey team with worldwide recognition. Even so, Nakakita felt that the team still lacked sufficient determination and the inner strength needed to win. So he urged them to develop a stronger will to win during practice and actual matches. However, Nakakita was shocked by the words of one of the players. Nakakita believed that the spirit of respecting others, which he had demanded of the players, was essential to ensure victory. He realized that perhaps he was the one who most lacked this spirit of respect. Nakakita began to reconsider how best he should interact with the team players. <laughs> <laughs> 